Start by combining your warm milk, sweetened condensed milk, and yeast and set it aside to bloom. In your mixer, combine your flour and salt. You can also add a little lemon or orange zest for a little brightness. Then once your yeast mixture is ready, add it to your dry ingredients along with your egg. Start mixing by using your hook attachment. Once everything has come together, slowly add in your softened butter one small chunk at a time. I decided to cut my recipe in half so the hook is really struggling to reach the small amount of dough I'm making. Again, this would be a lot easier if you're using a full recipe because the hook will actually have enough dough to latch onto. Scrape the bowl to help the mixer if needed. Once everything is finally combined, turn your mixer up to medium-high and let it do its thing. This is a very hydrated wet dough, so it will be very sticky at the start. This is after about 10 minutes of mixing. The dough is still sticking to the sides of the bowl. Just keep going. You can see that it's trying to pull away from the bowl, but it's not quite there yet. If you do the window pane test, the dough tears when you gently stretch it. It is also very tacky and sticky. Keep mixing. I let it go for another 6-8 to eight minutes. You really have to trust the process. Don't give up before it's done kneading. Now you can also knead this dough by hand, but it will take at least 25 minutes to come together. So I really suggest using a mixer for this. You'll know it's done when a ball forms and it's not sticking to the sides as much. Now it might still stick a little bit, but you will see a big difference in texture. The dough will be way less sticky. Put your dough into a lightly greased bowl and cover it. Place it in a warm place and let it rest for an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the temperature of your room. You can see here that it's much more smooth than it was 8 minutes ago. Just look at how elastic it is and has been sufficiently kneaded. The gluten is well developed and the dough doesn't tear when you stretch it. Meanwhile, prep your fruit. Slice up your peaches or you can also cut them into chunks, whichever you prefer. You also don't have to use peaches, you can do any fruit of your choice. Strawberries are another great option with a little strawberry jam in the center. You can use the fresh peaches as is, or you can add a little brown sugar, a pinch of salt, and my secret ingredient, a splash, or two of bourbon. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we'll make our cream cheese filling. It's very simple. You just combine softened cream cheese, sugar, salt, and vanilla extract. I'm adding a little lemon zest to give it a little citrus kick. You can also add orange zest or just leave the zest out completely. If your cream cheese is soft, it should be easy to combine with a spatula. Or you can do it in a mixer with a paddle attachment. Once your dough has doubled in size, punch out the air and divide it into 12 equal pieces. Then form each dough into balls and smooth them out. Then flatten the balls because they will rise quite a bit. Again, we'll let the dough rest for another 30 minutes or so, or until they have puffed up nicely, almost doubled in size. Once the buns have risen, make an indent in the center using a spoon or your fingers for the cream cheese and fruit filling. You can dip your spoon in a little bit of flour to prevent it from sticking to the dough. Add a spoonful of your cream cheese filling and top with your fruit. Make an egg wash and brush the buns to create a nice glossy finish. Bake at 325 degrees for about 15 minutes. I pull mine out of the oven before they start to brown too much because I find the textures more fluffy and airy that way. Finish off with a little bit of melted butter. 